Hey everyone, and welcome to Tony for A'ud Billahi Min Al-Shaytan Rajim. Uh, I mean Tony for you. I've covered a lot of demons and angels from across the Abrahamic religions, from the earliest incarnations of Jewish mysticism to more modern works regarding angelology and demonology. Despite this, I haven't talked much about the Islamic religion's interpretations of these spiritual entities. Until recently, I believed the interpretations of the divine and demonic were roughly the same as Judaism and Christianity, but after researching more, I was amazed at how different they are in a variety of interesting and profound ways. From the fall of Iblis akin to the fall of Lucifer and the Shaitan akin to the demons of the underworld, to the whole other race sharing our world, known as the Jinn. So let's dive deep into the uniquely Islamic characters of Shin Megami Tensei and learn all about the youngest Abrahamic religion. This video was made possible by the great people over at my Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the link in the description below. Also, I have a Discord, so if you want to come and chat with me and other wannabe theologists, come join and hang out. When talking about the unique characters of Islam, what better place to start than the Jinn? While the first thing that pops into your head when you think of a Jinn, or Genie, is a magical, brightly colored ghost that grants wishes, the reality of this race has a lot more to it. Jinn live structured lives, work, have families, and even worship God like humans. Tracing back to the beginnings of Islam, and even further with the local folklore of the Arabian Peninsula, the Jinn have a rich history. The word Jinn is plural for genie, which is believed to come from the root jinana, meaning to hide or conceal, which makes sense as the Jinn are not able to be seen by normal humans. Sadly, not much is known about the Jinn's origins in pre-Islamic Arabic folklore, but many speculate these were the contemporary gods of the time, as many early religions were polytheistic. Interestingly, many people also believe the Jinn were meant to depict evil spirits that wander the desert. And to bolster this theory, there were many similar records of Jinn-like creatures from close-by areas like ancient Mesopotamia. Specifically in Palmyra, which is now Syria, these beings were called the Jinni, as written in ancient Aramaic. So creatures like this were a part of Arabic culture and the Middle East as a whole for potentially many thousands of years. As mentioned in Islam, this race is one of the three sentient beings created by God. The angels that were made of light, the humans that were made of clay, and the jinn that were made of smokeless fire. The jinn had a close connection to the desert and made their homes in dark places, usually ruins, and could transform into many different animals. While they may be invisible to us, jinn can make contact with, influence, and even possess human beings. Being possessed by one of these entities usually drove one insane, with the Arabic word for madman being majnun, meaning possessed by a genie. Despite this frightening ability, as I said before, jinn are neither wholly good or wholly evil. They are a sentient race created by God and functioned in much the same way as humans. With their own friends and families, kings and queens, and art and culture, they were revered as well as feared by the locals. In fact, much art from the people at the time was cited to have been inspired by a jinn, possibly even possessed to make it. They were often seen as a race in between the realms of earth and spirit, and could be a great help or hindrance to whoever they crossed paths with. They operated in much the same way as daemons in ancient Greece, with many of them being teachers of art and science and makers of awe-inspiring art and poetry. With the rise of Islam thanks to the Prophet Muhammad, the jinn were incorporated into this new religion with an entire chapter dedicated to them, with the surah simply titled Al-Jinn, meaning the jinn. In this chapter, it outlines how the jinn were compelled to follow the guidance of the Quran, saying, Among us are those who are righteous and those who are less so. We have been of different factions. Now, we truly know we cannot frustrate Allah on earth, nor can we escape from him into heaven. When we heard the guidance of the Quran, we readily believed in it. For whoever believes in their Lord will have no fear of being denied a reward or wronged. And among us are those who have submitted to Allah and those who are deviant. So as for those who submitted, it is they who have attained right guidance. And as for the deviant, they will be fuel for hell. Even with the guidance of the Quran, the jinn still remain a complex race. There were those of the jinn race whose sole aim was to lead humanity astray from the right guidance of God. And these beings were dubbed Shaitan, meaning Satan. That is not to say the jinn are devils, as the word Satan itself is more of a title than a name. The word Satan in Hebrew is often translated to the word adversary or simply one who opposes. This word shows up many times in biblical scripture and is sometimes even attributed to angels working on behalf of God. In this case, the jinn who oppose Allah and aim to taint humans are Shaitan or adversaries to God. Shaitan in Islam serve much the same function as the fallen angels turned demons in Christian canon. 
with a great war in heaven breaking out after Lucifer convinced one-third of all demons to rebel against God, resulting in their swift defeat by the Most High and cast down into the depths of hell for their arrogance, with their chief Lucifer now being known as the Devil. Lucifer and these fallen angels continue to this day, influencing humans to act against the will of God and their fellow man, and must be fought back against as they have no true power. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Officially, Lucifer is trapped in hell and is a prisoner alongside all those cast into the pits of Tartarus, with many believing the true overseer of hell is the Archangel Uriel. This is important to understand, since in more recent times, there's been an idea of Lucifer being some commanding entity rivaling the power of God, with the ideals of freedom and individuality core to his belief. The truth is, Lucifer was always pure evil, and only aimed to overthrow God to take his place, nothing driving him but envy and pride. Depictions such as Paradise Lost and even Dante's Divine Comedy, despite being fantastic works of art, are not canonical to Christian theology. For Islam, the parallel to Lucifer is a being known as Iblis. Instead of being a fallen angel, Iblis was a great jinn general who fought on behalf of God. According to Islam, angels are not really capable of free thought. Though sentient, angels have no need for things like a name or free will, as their sole purpose is to enact the will of God. Very few angels are named in the Quran, aside from the archangels, here called Jibra'il, Mika'il, Israfil, and Azra'il. The idea of naming angels is wholly unnecessary and only done for the needs of humans, since they will only ever act as God wills. Jinn, on the other hand, do have free will, and Iblis was one of the first, created even before the times of Adam. He was a devout follower of God for thousands of years, and in his pious worship, he eventually ascended to the seventh heaven among the angels. When Adam was created, God called for all the angels to bow before him, to which they all did. Iblis, on the other hand, was a jinn created of fire, rather than a true angel. He refused the will of God and did not bow. Due to his defiance, Iblis was cast down back to earth and stripped of all he had worked towards, becoming El Shaitan. Now on earth, Iblis is the king of evil jinn, whose sole aim is to lead humans away from the teachings of God as fuel for the fires of hell. Islam, much like other Abrahamic religions, uses these evil spirits as explanations for the evils of the world, but with a little more nuance. More recently, the types of jinn are put into five main types. Jan, Jinn, Shaitan, Ifrit, and Marid. According to these groups, Jan is the general term for all jinn, and Jinn is specifically used for families and tribes. Shaitan is the term for evil jinn, those jinn who call Iblis their king. Ifrit are also usually evil jinn, but with much more power in the magical arts, usually the power over the elements of fire and earth. Marids are the most powerful type of jinn, and are usually evil, as their name literally translates to rebellious. These great beings are most likely the inspiration for modern interpretations of genies, as they are powerful enough to even grant wishes and hold power over all the elements of Earth. In the original story of Aladdin, our hero had two magical artifacts that held jinn within them, a ring and a lamp. Many interpret the jinn of the ring to be an ifrit, and the jinn of the lamp to be a marid. These titles do not encompass all types of jinn, and certainly many jinn can fit the description of many categories. There are even jinn that don't fit any category, like the ghoul. These are spirits that mainly live in cemeteries, and are said to shapeshift and even consume the flesh of humans luring men with the fake body of a beautiful woman, only to devour the unsuspecting victim. And yes, if you're wondering, it's believed that this jinn is the origin of the word ghoul. Jinn can range from heroes, inspiring humans to seek glory and make great works, or be as horrifying as cannibal monsters, sending even the most fearless of men packing. Ultimately, jinn are a race with great power, but more importantly, free will. There are jinn that listened to the Prophet Muhammad and became Muslim, read the Bible and become Christian, read the Torah and become Jewish. They live their lives, not too unlike you and me. Though they are invisible spirits capable of great magic, there is a mutual respect as we're both children of God. So be respectful, and never judge a book by its cover. In Shin Megami Tensei, the jinn are portrayed in the stereotypical genie in a bottle way, with the lower half of clouds and the top half of a brightly colored man. They are called Jinn instead of Genie, and their alignment is neutral-neutral, so I do believe they did their research when it came to the Jinn in some way. Ifrit are also depicted in the game and are similar to the Jinn. Instead of clouds, their lower half is fire, with dark skin and horns like a ram. Their alignment is also neutral, showing the nuance of the race. 
Shaitan appears in the series as well, and are depicted in a rather unique way. In line with the previous types of jinns, they have the lower body of a rainbow of colors flowing into a small human-like body, wearing a leather jacket and sporting a punk mohawk. I gotta say, them being depicted as the little punks of the jinn world is actually a pretty funny twist on the horrible demons they're played up to be. Iblis, sadly, is only in the Devil Children games, and is portrayed in a way I can't even begin to speculate on, looking more like a golem than any jinn, and being colored seemingly randomly. I don't think they put much thought into the design, which is a shame, as Iblis deserves just as much respect as Lucifer in the games. Oh well, maybe Iblis will get the respect he deserves in a future game. Overall, Islam is quite well represented in the games. Here's hoping they add more from it, and Arabic folklore as a whole. Well, that covers the Islamic demons of SMT. Let me know which part you found most interesting in the comments down below, and while you're down there, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Learning all about the jinn was a surreal experience for me, as until now, I thought all Abrahamic religions were generally the same, but there's always so much more to learn. Special thanks to Andre Venetius da Silva Valens, Anton, Big T, Frankie Stoned, Goose Kebab, Jim Taylor, Just a Middleman, Matt M, Patty123, Stuart Ash, The Digital Dutchman, The Toaster Messiah, VideoGamer75, and many more for supporting the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the link in the description below. Thanks for watching this Islamic Theology Breakdown, and I'll see you in the next Tony For You. Have a good one.